Okay. During the Second World War, a lot of GIs stuffed their duffel bags with all kind of war trophies. Now, if you were in Europe, you had a massive selection because the Germans were really, really big into handguns. And when you got back to the United States, 9mm ammunition, 32 ACP was common as could be. Now, if you were in the Pacific Theater, two problems. One, the Japanese are not into handguns. They didn't have that many. Two, they had proprietary ammunition which was a real problem when you got back to the United States and you wanted to shoot that souvenir unless you brought some ammunition with you that you had picked up. So we're gonna start at the far end here with the first unique Japanese handgun. And that is the Type 26, developed in the 1890s. It is a revolver top break. And it's, it's got recessed cylinders, which was a, a new, uh, a new idea in those days. I think the 1871 Colt Lightning was the first one. Now, this particular gun was made from about 1890 to about 1925 or so, but they were issued as late as the end of the war, usually to NCOs. It's a double action gun. It's got one major weak point. You can spin the cylinder. It only locks up when you pull the trigger. So you can have the gun in the holster jiggled a little bit. Next thing you know, you're firing on an empty chamber, which could be very disconcerting. Now, if you look at this gun, Beneath it here, I have, which is rarer than the gun, and that is the ammunition for it, okay? These cartridges are actually harder to find than the guns, okay? And they were only made in Japan, and that became a problem when you got back to the United States. If you wanted to shoot this, hopefully you bought some ammunition with you. The only ammunition that I ever found that was commercially available is right here. And that is from Western Scrounger, I think it's called. The old Western Scrounger, O-W-S. And what they did is they took 38 Smith & Wesson and they machined away some of the rim starting from the, whoops, starting from the top. It's a very thin rim. All right, nothing like it in the United States. So you had to machine away um, a 38 S&W case to give it that thin rim and therefore you could fire these guns. So the ammunition on the head stamp, let's see if I can open this up. And I even have, let's see what I paid for it. Oh my God. Let's see. And here we have from Sarko, let's see, August 12th, 1997. And at that time I had to pay $45, $45. For 50 rounds. Uh, last week at the um, Eastern Gun Show, uh, Palmer Gun Show, I bought reloads that somebody made $20 for 50 rounds, but they're just hard to find. If you have one of these guns, it's not gonna be a shooter. All right, I wanna get to that later, all right? But I want you to understand the problem with ammunition. It's a very anemic cartridge. Now, the Japanese then progressed, and they realized they needed a semi-automatic. So they produce what is called a Type 14, sometimes called the Japanese Luger. It is in no way a Luger mechanism, okay? And this was gonna be the standard arm. Now, if you were a Japanese officer, you purchased your handgun. You could buy some foreign ones too, but you purchased your handgun. Now, if you collect Japanese rifles, you know the chrysanthemum is very important. It shows that it belongs to the emperor and should not be disgraced. There's no chrysanthemum on Japanese handguns because they don't belong to the emperor. They belong to the individual uh, officer who had to lay out some serious money to get one. So this is the early Type 14. Now, ammunition for it in the United States was also a real problem. I have some original ammunition here that I'll show you. But that's another problem was, again, they're the only country in the world that made this stuff. And if you look carefully... And there's nothing on the head stamp. They just don't, they don't head stamp them. And uh, these are probably, wait, these are probably some reloads in here. I thought I had some original, original, which is with the indentation on the side to show you what they look like. Now this, I must have grabbed the wrong bag. Let's see. Now, that one I'll explain while, yeah. Now, the Midway Company, fantastic, Midway Arms, their start in the business of arms and ammunition was to get Nambu pistol ammunition. They bought, they had an order made of 500,000 cases. 
that are Nambu, and then they loaded them with full metal jacket, and for a while, they were the only Nambu ammunition you could buy in the United States. Unfortunately, when they ran out of their 500,000 uh, cases, they decided not to, it wasn't a sufficient enough market, and um, these are now very desirable. I think I paid $20 for this in the 1990s, and about 15 years later, I had to pay $35 at a gun show for my second box, because I like to have at least one box per pistol. Another company that made it is OWS, which is Old Western Scrounger. I only have one round, but they also were making it. They came in a nice blue box with a picture of Mount Fuji on it, everything else. They're also difficult to find. Uh, if you're into jab pistols, you're not gonna be doing much shooting. Now, what if you wanna still, you, you wanna shoot? Well, you can reload it by, by making cases out of 40 Smith & Wesson, okay? If you can get 40 Smith & Wesson cases, you can do that. Now, this purportedly is a box of original ammunition. It was given to me by a very serious collector. He claimed that there was, the rounds were inside. It's in awful good shape for me to say this is 75 years old. So I don't know whether somebody went through a lot of effort to make a fake box of Japanese ammo or whether it's the real deal. All right. Now, we have the 1911, we have the 1911A1. Well, basically, the Japanese did a similar thing. This is a Type 14, this is a Type 14. But they made some changes, Two, okay, three major changes. One, you'll notice the cocking handle here is grooved like this as compared to what was over here. All right. They added a large trigger guard. That's, the, that's how you quickly identify the, the later models. That's because their troops in Manchuria were finding out that if you were wearing gloves and you tried to put them in there, you sometimes set the gun off. So they increased the trigger guard. There also was a problem with the magazines falling out somehow, so they added this little spring catch here that puts friction, that puts friction, it goes upstairs, that on the magazine, all right? Sometimes you run into weird boxes of ammunition. Here's an example, you can see where it is, Farnsworth, whatever it is. Ammunition, I found this in a gun store that was going out of business. It's 20 rounds of Nambu full metal jacket and the head stamp is FC 8 millimeter Nambu, which would need federal cartridge. I have never found a box of federal cartridge uh, Nambu ammunition. Now, there was a demand in, in the Japanese for a smaller handgun. That's what led to the development of the Type 94, which has all sorts of stories and rumors that are false. One is that it was a suicide gun. You held it a certain way, you could shoot yourself. Baloney. If you want to shoot yourself, you don't need to hold the gun and make believe you're surrendering. Just put it to your head and pull the trigger. A lot of these guns were made late in the war, were in really rough condition. But it, without the you know, end of the war, a lot of things were. And people were saying, oh, that shows what cheap Japanese junk. No. It's a quality pistol. It was designed for paratroopers, people in tanks, and pilots who needed a smaller handgun than the standard Type 14. So we have here now, why did the Japanese not care much for handguns? These are all really peep squeak rounds because this is the answer right here. <laughs> they were sword people, okay? They, if one's gonna be close combat, this is what they wanna carry. You know, the, the handgun is, is not a priority for them, okay? The sword was. And if you were a GI, chances are you probably ran into more swords than handguns. And you know what? If you brought this back as a souvenir, it probably had more practical value than some of these handguns because of the ammunition problem. But again, this is a quick review. Now, if you are a serious person about Japanese guns, uh, the book is called Hand Cannons of Imperial Japan by Harry Derby. And there's an article in here by Harry Derby Harry Derby. That's considered the ultimate book on uh, Japanese handguns. Now, what is the legacy of the Japanese handguns? Well, after the war, a guy named Bill Ruger had a baby Nambu, which is a smaller version of this in a special seven millimeter caliber. And he fooled around with it, and he came out with his de design, which is the biggest selling US 22 handgun in the world, and that's the Ruger. So the genesis of the Ruger standard pistol is actually evolution from the Japanese. So good collecting my ASP viewers. Please use the comments section if anybody knows more about FC Mark Nambu Ammo or anything else that deals with this topic would be greatly appreciated.
And this is an article? Yeah. From... American Rifleman. Sure. What's just that? What'd you find there? It's upstairs in the box with all the people's badges and whatnot. Let's see, it's, uh, it's marked March 78, paid. <laughs> do you want it or do you want to put it back in the... Oh, hang on. It's funny. I think when we first joined the club, you had to wear these. You know, you yeah. walked in, they issued you your ID. When you walked out, you had to turn your ID in. Yeah, because it's in a case like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. From 1978. Yeah, that was the old days. These are the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that means things are going to get a lot worse. That's exactly what it means. Yeah. yeah. That's what you that's have to exactly worry about. Oh, this is a beautiful boar. Yeah. You know what? You know, you know why they're a beautiful boar? Because the ammunition is next to impossible to get. Oh. That's the problem. I, I thought you were going to say it wasn't corrosive. The, actually, the ammunition is rarer than the pistol. Finding um, Japanese rimmed ammo. I'm a break top guy, and I like this. And that's a nice gun. Jesus. Nine millimeter revolver? Yeah, nine range. millimeter revolver. Which round is that? There, that's name. Okay, that's for that pistol. That's it's made it? from 38 S and W ammo. This one? Yeah, yeah. Will Jones also makes it. But that's for years. That was the, the problem. Somewhere I thought I had some original. The scrounger. 